Welcome to Small Girl Big Talk, where we talk about all the big stuff in adulthood like relationships, self identity, money, health, and all the other important things that you care about. I'm your host, Wendy, and my hope is really for this podcast to bring comfort and help you feel a little bit less alone in your adulthood journey. Today, I want to talk about quarter life crisis. And if you don't know what a quarter life crisis is, first of all, that's good for you because you obviously haven't been through a phase in your life where you question and doubt every single thing that made you feel like you need to search up what exactly it is. Um, but for the sake of our discussion today, I did just search up on Google on the definition for a quarter life crisis. And according to Wikipedia, a quarter life crisis is a crisis involving anxiety over the direction and quality of one's life, which is most commonly experienced in a period ranging from a person's early 20s up to their mid 30s. I just turned 30 this year. And I remember going through my quarter life crisis about two years ago, right before I moved into this place. I remember that I knew exactly what I was going through and I really took my time to figure things out without rushing through it. I think it is also because that it's not my first time going through some sort of crisis in my life. Like I had depression a few years prior to that. And if anything, I think having depression prior to that has only made navigating quarter life crisis a lot easier for myself. And I figured, why not share with you some of the thought process that I had back then that has helped me to get through it. And hopefully it will help you in your quarter life crisis as well. So for me personally, I find that a quarter life crisis is really a period of uncertainty where you really doubt every single decision that you have. But I also think that it is a chance for you to reset your life at the quarter life mark as well, assuming that we all live till our 80s and our 90s, right? So first of all, I do want to mention that if you are going through a quarter life crisis right now, I can totally understand how you are feeling right now. The word that comes to my mind is stuck. Like you just felt like you're stuck at where you are right now. You just question every single decision that you have made in your life up to this point. You feel directionless. You feel confused. You feel unsure. And all these feelings, all these emotions just makes you even more anxious. It causes anxiety about every single thing that you have in your life. And you just want to quit everything. You want to quit your job. You want to break up from your relationship. You want to let go of all these responsibilities. Like you just want to quit. And for the first time in your life, you might even be... You might even wish that you are just a little bit younger right now, that you don't have any of these responsibilities, right? Like, why did we all want it to rush to grow up when we were younger? Isn't it better to just be younger? <laughs> and I remember that I just really wanted to run away from every single problem that I was facing and I wanted to start fresh, even though honestly, I didn't know how starting fresh even looked like for me at that time of my life. And I'm sharing all of this with you because I want you to know that if that is what you're experiencing right now, those feelings are completely normal, okay? I went through all of it, which is why I can describe it so well. And I do want to mention though, like back when I experienced all these emotions and all these thoughts and all these feelings, I wasn't really exactly going through anything in my life. Like nothing was really falling apart. My job was going fine. My relationship with Kevin was going fine. My personal life generally was all right. If anything, I think it was just feeling really stagnant for me. And that is why I started questioning myself. It's almost like I felt like I didn't deserve all the good things that I have back then and I needed to question things. But that's just how quarter life crisis is, okay? 
Now, I do want to mention, so it, at times like that, you can choose to cope outwards by distracting yourself through scrolling on social media, binging Netflix, drinking alcohol, smoking weed, and doing all these things that you can do that will bring you comfort at that short period of time. But you will not find the answers that you are looking for until you start looking inwards to really self-reflect and to figure out what exactly it is that is in your mind. So looking inwards and self-reflection is definitely a way to go. And the easiest way to do is definitely through journaling, meditating, or just going on a quiet walk, okay? So for those of you who have not journaled before, I think that it is the easiest thing to do. Maybe you don't like writing, you can try typing as well. You can open up a notebook, take a blank sheet of paper, open a notepad on your computer or your phone. But I do want to encourage, if you are using a digital device to journal, please turn on do not disturb mode or turn off notifications so that you can truly focus on writing. Okay, the goal is really to just start writing to figure out what is it in your mind. So if you don't know what to write, that is completely normal. I do have a few prompts to help guide you to probably get started. But I just want you to know that if you feel like journaling is something that feels so strange and so far away from you, that is normal. The idea is that as you write, it actually helps you to express yourself better to figure out what exactly it is that is in your mind. Now, here are some questions that you can ask yourself, okay? Number one, what do I want in life? And if you don't know what you want in your life, another question that you can try answering is, what do I know for sure that I don't want in my life? I think this question itself, it should be able to help guide you towards knowing what you want, okay? I'm just going to repeat it again. What do I know for sure I don't want in my life? Next up, you can also ask yourself, what makes me happy? And you can also ask yourself, what do I have now that I can be grateful for? Here are just some sentences, some prompts that can probably help you in terms of your journaling. Moving on to meditating. I know that meditation sounds really woe to you if you have not done before. But with the technology that we have these days, with the content that we have out on social media these days, it's actually very easy for you to get started. So you can try downloading apps that has guided meditation that you can try. Headspace and Calm are both very famous meditation app that you can test. For me personally, I began my meditating journey by watching the Silva Method video on YouTube. You can search it up. It's S-I-L-V-A. Um, that is just the introductory to meditation to myself, just to understand how I can breathe and how I can approach mindful practice. A lot of people, when it comes to meditation, they feel like you know it's about quieting your mind to not think about anything. But meditation is not really about that. It's more so about you just being quiet, looking inwards to be aware of the thoughts that you have in your mind. Now, as you are going through quite a life crisis, you probably have a lot of things in your mind and that is completely normal. Meditating just helps you to be aware of all these thoughts that you have. Perhaps you might want to have a notepad or a paper right beside you after you meditate so that you can actually write down all the thoughts that you have observed in your meditation. For me personally, I have been meditating for over a year now. And for me, sometimes it's about visualizing the life that I want, but sometimes it's really just having that quiet moment to figure out what exactly I am stressed about, what exactly I am thinking about. And I did not meditate when I was going through a quarter life crisis, even though I wish I did. But one thing that I did do at that point is I went on a digital fast. So I actually stopped 
myself from watching Netflix and scrolling on social media. I think I have a limited time frame that I allowed myself to scroll on social media and I didn't allow myself to watch Netflix at all. And I find that that gave me a lot more time to actually force myself to figure out what is on my mind. What I really enjoyed doing at that time is to actually go on walks. So I would put on my earbuds, turn on instrumental music, and just go on a walk. For me, at that point, I was kind of going through a religious fast, so I actually was listening to instrumental worship music. And when I was going on my walks, I actually have these quiet conversations in my mind between me and God. I would ask questions like, God, what exactly it is that you want me to do in my life? And I felt like even though I didn't get my answer immediately then, this little moment has helped guide me towards the answer that I was looking for. Now, if you are not religious like I am, I still think that this practice can be done. It's really about going on a walk and quieting your mind with instrumental music, okay? Don't listen to songs with lyrics on it because it's going to distract yourself. You can choose to ask the universe or the creator or your source or maybe just ask yourself the questions that you want to find the answers of. The key is really to make time for you to be aware of the thoughts that you have. Because I feel like I don't know if it's an Asian thing. Maybe it's a general millennial thing. Is that we are not taught to really understand ourselves and to express ourselves in the way that we are supposed to. Ever since we were young, we mold ourselves into what our parents want or what the society tells us that we should be doing. But we weren't spending enough time with ourselves to figure out what exactly it is that we want. You know, some of us might not even know who we are as a person or how is our personality like. And for those of you who are really struggling to get to know yourself a little bit better, there are a lot of free personality tests out there that might be very helpful for you. You can check out the Myers-Briggs personality test. I think there is a free website called 16 Personalities. You can also check out what is your Enneagram. So to spell Enneagram, it is E-N-N-E-A-G-R-A-M. You can check out which Enneagram you are. Or you can also check out your DISC personality as well, D-I-S-C personality. So these are some popular tests that are out there. I wouldn't say that it is 100% accurate and it will tell you exactly who you are as a person. But I think if you are struggling in getting to know yourself, this test might be a good guide, a good start into helping you to figure out who you are, what you want in your life, what you like in your life, and so on. You know, as we talk about figuring out who we are and all that stuff, I know how it feels like to feel the pressure to really have it all figured out as soon as possible. But you know what? When it comes to your quarter life crisis, you really need to take all the time that you need. Because as much as this feels very uncomfortable, you really want to be patient about this because this is the time that you are probably going to make a very big decision in your life. Whether it is a change of career, Maybe you are trying something new that you have never done before in your entire life. Maybe you want to end a relationship that has been in your life for a very long time. These are big decisions that you don't want to make rashly without really thinking about this. Okay, You want to be realistic with these goals that you are setting. Okay? Just for an example, maybe you are like me. You have always chosen the safe path of having a 9 to 5, but now you want to pursue an entrepreneurial journey. Okay, starting a business requires research, capital, a good marketing strategy, a lean process, a good team. And to get to all these things, you need time to achieve them. You know, have you had enough savings that can help you to sustain yourself for the next six months, irregardless of how the business is doing? 
in and and same thing goes for relationships. If you were to leave a relationship, are you ready to deal with the consequences that comes with it? You know, I don't mean to say all these things to scare you, but I'm just saying that this are all big decisions and you need time to figure things out. You need to really plan things ahead instead of just deciding things there and then and deal with the consequences after that, okay? Take baby steps. Take small steps to get towards where you want to be. At this moment, maybe your goal is to really just figure out what you want to do. And as you know what it is, and as you are moving towards that direction, it's really about focusing on the baby steps to help you to get there. Because at the end of the day, life is really about the journey and not so much about the destination, okay? Remember that life is all about the journey. You know where you want to go, but the key is really in enjoying the process of getting to where you want to go. So why rush all of that, right? And I do want to also mention that you might be leaning towards keeping all of these struggles to yourself because you feel like it is a me problem. You know, it is all about myself. I don't want to burden my loved ones with all these troubles that I have in my mind. But trust me, you need to open up and talk to your loved ones, whether it's your friends or your families about what you are going through. Because most of the time, you will be surprised by their reaction and how supportive they can be in your journey. We are often very harsh on ourselves and we all have our insecurities that makes us to doubt ourselves and to not believe in ourselves to really get to where we want. And having a strong support system can really ease things and to make it easier for us to get to where we want to go. Now, I know some of us might not be as lucky to have supportive friends and family around us and they might not see the vision that we have. But I also believe that with the internet these days, you can easily find all sorts of community out there, whether it's through a podcast community like mine or you can also search it through places like Reddit. You know, personally, I have found so many interesting communities on Reddit that I never knew I needed, but I love them so much. One more thing when it comes to dealing with part of life crisis is you really want to be able to have a growth mindset. So instead of thinking as you having all these thoughts as a sign of weakness or indecisiveness, I want you to think of this as an opportunity instead. You know how in all the superhero movies that we watch, there is always this one point where they look as if they are failing or they are dying? Like when Spider-Man fainted after he saved the passengers from the train or like the countless times when Harry Potter fainted or injured himself and you thought that he's not going to make it. But they never died. They always rise up again and fought the villain and save the day and, you know, have a happy ending. This can be your plot twist moment as well. You might feel as if you are failing, that you are struggling and you might not like where you are right now. But this could be the opportunity for you to truly rise up and to make that change in your life again. So you really have to hone into that growth mindset to keep on fighting, to stay resilient, to stay persistent, to get to the life that you want. Even though at this moment, you might not know exactly what you want, but just know that something positive is going to come out of this. And that wraps up the tips that I have for you when it comes to dealing with quarter life crisis. I do want to mention that I really believe that a quarter life crisis, it is a very natural phase for our personal and professional growth. For me personally, what came out of my quarter life crisis, it's actually me moving into this home that I'm staying in right now. I moved here two years ago after deciding that what I needed was a space that can allow me to be creative again, to be inspired again. And it is safe to say that this was exactly what I needed at that moment to help me to grow into the person I am today. So like I said, quarter-life crisis usually leads to big decision. 
which is why I encourage you to not rush through it. And I don't know the outcome of your self-discovery. I don't know how things will end up for you after you get through this phase. But whatever it is, I already know that it is the perfect solution that you need to help you get through your life to get to where you want. Okay? And that's all that I have for you right now. I hope that you find a little bit of comfort in knowing that you are really not alone in dealing with all these feelings and all these struggles and the pain. And just know that we have your back, okay? We are all in this together. And I hope to see you in my next episode again. Goodbye.